I'm sure lots of people were like, you're never going to make it. You know, like you have that feeling yourself, you're never going to make it. Yeah. I think every artist feels that way. Oh, absolutely. At every, at some point in their life. And then, know? but it's not even, it's even say, for me, like, for example, like I was, I was telling a little bit about like my story and being in an industry, like to some people they're like, oh, like you have had success, but I'm like, to me, I have not done what you know. Yeah. Drop well, you're always want to. exactly. Watch your boom shot. You're telling me that it's a bit too late and murder now. So this one, you're sure shot to kill us. Boom shots. Boom shots. So we have the privilege of being up here in Strawberry Hills. Invitation, personal invitation yeah. by Krisha. Krisha. We're in Jamaica, if you don't know already. But the reason why we're here is because we wanted to catch up with our home girl about why she's in Jamaica. Oh boy. So I'm I'm here out promoting a new record called Sexy Gal featuring Jamaica's TLK. Um, and for the viewers who don't know, I'm actually a Jamaican myself, uh, but many day uh, from a long time. So I am excited to be back on the island and, you know, back in the energy and the vibes and the good food and at Christmas time and getting to check some of my family and then of course talking with you guys. I mean, you were just mentioned it's slightly different being up here because when you've been in Jamaica before, you always heard about strawberry hills. Yes, yes. When I used to, li I used to live in Spanish Town, so we never live up a hill, you know. So <laughs> to come up a hill and be up in this beautiful resort, which is on top of the blue, like or near Blue Mountain, but on top of the hills and being able to look down at Kingston is definitely. This was definitely not the view that I had when I when I used to live here back in the day. I always heard about Strawberry Hill and this is my first time getting to stay here and I love it. I'm sure, I mean it's an amazing view. How, um, what kind of stuff have you been getting into while you've been here? Oh boy. <laughs> well I got in Sunday and so I've been here almost for a full week. You know, on Monday, I was at Mojito Mondays. You know, all the dance crews did a promote and show off and that's one thing that I love about the dance hall culture and, and the community out here is, is the dances. I, every time I come to Jamaica I always ask you like teach me what's the, what's the newest dance, what's the newest dance. So then they teach me the creech. The creech? Yes. Who taught you that? Um, we had some of the boys from Supreme <laughs> Blaze that did flex and, and teach me the creech. So I really want to get into that sexy girl video because I've heard so much about oh, it. Oh goodness. You have great publicists <laughs> chewing my ear off about it but yes. so I might as well ask. It sounds like it's going to be super hot. Yeah, wait, well, the title is Sexy Girl. Yeah, you yeah, have to come correct. <laughs> <laughs> you have a song called Sexy Girl and I look sexy. You see it? <laughs> so, what's this whole song about? It's all about dancing and like I mean like the first line of the lyrics is show off your whining skills, you know, all the gal them that ready with your hot dress to kill, you know what I mean? Like we're talking about going out, going to the dance, you know, letting you're letting the bystanders know that you're here, you're dressed, you're ready, you're sexy. And you're representing and you're representing, yes. Wicked. And what that's that's quite important because you know, music, sometimes people get carried away, especially like in their careers. Sometimes artists start to feel like they have some responsibility on their shoulders and they start to tame this down or they kind of change a different way. But in your case, you kind of started off like the girl next door and became more sexy. Oh, thank you. You know? I did. So, what, how did that transition happen? You know, and why? You know, because. You know, I have Thank to you. say, I have to say that the reason, or my transition happened more just because, as they say, when I'm a new artist coming into the industry, you know, you and I came with the understanding that I would not have control from the beginning. 
to talk a little bit about my history, but before I got signed, I worked the underground hip hop scene. And everything I did was always a mixture of dancehall, R&B, and hip hop. And then when I got signed, the label kind of took me all the way the opposite to what I did. They took me all the way pop. They got me to start straightening my hair. I would do, you know, uh, media training, and they told me not to speak in my in, in the Jamaican dialect wow. at all. Like, I want to speak proper all the time, which I can do because I'm a Canadian Jamaican. Like, I grew up on in both worlds, so it's like being bilingual. I can go back and forth whenever I feel like. And so, um, I had to essentially appease the label at the beginning of my career. And with time, with success, you gain control and. With that in mind, I played along and, and I have slowly been pressing the needle back into my direction <laughs> and I feel like I'm finally back to where I was before. So instead of it being an evolution, for me it's a full circle. So is this the real deal? Yes. yes. <laughs> Trust me. Like the reason Yay. I tell, you know what, I have to tell this, it's a, it's a short little story, but I remember I came across a comment recently, like just a fan. And he says, you remember, he's like a person back backstage and he, he, I don't know if he's a sound man or whatever, but he says, you remember seeing me backstage interacting with my band and I was carrying on and talking in the dialect and, and just being me. And he says, he remembers thinking like, yo, like, where's this girl? Like, why isn't she on stage? And then now that I'm putting out this new music that I have had the creative control of that has my dance hall presence back into it, he wrote, I, it's so nice to finally see the girl that I saw backstage. And how does that make you feel? Because you know, do you feel do you feel robbed of years, or do you just feel like it's a learning process? Uh, everything happens for a reason. Timing is everything, and I'm definitely one of those people that just believes that part of my journey, all of that, was definitely something that was necessary. Everything about timing, things that have happened in my life, um, from being a much younger person and now being into. You know, I feel, I'm a woman, I feel like I'm a boss, I run my things, I control my music, I control what people hear from me and how they're able to digest me, like I'm in control of all of those things. And, and all and that came from having to listen to people, yeah. sometimes having to maybe take instructions and now you know how not to take them. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, I know exactly what I want to fight for, I know exactly, you know, how I want people to consume and my music and my imaging and my persona and all those things so but at the end of the day it's so much easier because instead of having to think about it instead of having to think about what the label oh with the label like this or with the, oh wait I'm talking in the dialogue you know what I mean like I don't have to worry about any of that anymore I'm just there yeah, <laughs> just you I'm just me You're wearing a Ben's Panani necklace. I wonder where you got it from. <laughs> Not to talk about. I mean, the reason why I'm bringing that up is that isn't an easy slogan just to like put on your chest and be out there. So you're clearly relaxed about it. Absolutely. You're clearly, and that's showing some kind of confidence. Do you think you also, as you get older, absolutely and more experience? I wouldn't say older, just more experience that brings it out. Because some people may feel kind of a little shy about something like that even if they were really like that do you feel that experience really brings you that confidence no absolutely when as especially as as a woman like i just feel like the older that we get we feel like we come into our own we, you know, we become more centered we become more aware of who we are and what we want and um i can definitely say that with all of the lessons and you know how you say it, Things that might have slapped me across the face over the couple of years, I, I understand so much more, and and you become less. How do I say? You become unapologetic. Mm -hmm. You know, like you just realize that there's nothing better than just being who you are instead of all these years of trying to be a people pleaser and trying to wonder, oh, is this person going to be worried about this? Is this going to be worried about this? And then you're also at a point in time where you know, if mommy, if my mommy, I'll come and be like. Young lady, <laughs> you're also at a different point where you're like, Mommy, like, you know, yeah. I've been out of the house for over a decade, like, you, you know, Mommy will always call you. Out. Yeah, I was mommy just about to say, you, Mommy will always call you out. Mom call but I listen, my mommy calls me out all the time. So, so they're always there, but at the same time, they even your even your family and even your parents understand that you know she's a woman, she's a big woman. You know, she's she's in this industry. She is in control of her business and her music. Like she knows, she knows, she's aware. She knows what she's doing. 
so I, I can definitely wear my Ben's Punani with a, <laughs> a, with a rock set. <laughs> Own it. With confidence, yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, you know, I actually just, 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 just sign a new team with Universal Republic, which I'm really, really, really excited about. Um, I have the new record, Sexy Gal, and the video we're dropping soon, and you guys are, you know, these guys, these watchers and listeners are going to be some of the first to see it. And um, I'm also working on a mixtape, which I'm really excited about, which for me is, uh, it's the same fusion of, like I said, the dance hall, the R&B, and the hip hop, but I can say it's a bit more, a bit more hip hop to it. It's more of the gutter, you know, kind of raw, more stuff. Because you did that circuit, so you know yeah. it well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm excited. We have some amazing features. I was on gonna, the yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, any great collabs? And oh, some exciting collaborations. Uh, my executive producer, his name is Yanni, and um, he's worked with everybody, like mm -hmm. from Lil Wayne to, you know, his, one of his biggest records was um, Say Ah for Trey Songs, and he did a bunch of stuff with uh, uh, Juicy J and Sean mm -hmm. Paul and a whole bunch of people over the last couple of years. And, his production alone is is what sets the tone, and then as far as collaborations, um, I, you know some of the ones I'm allowed to say. I have Maya on there. I have Wicked. I know oh we have Rika, Juicy J, Depande. We have um, we're, we're trying to set BOBs on there. We have that's a lot already. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, we're still working on some other ones. So I'm excited about about that new music that we're about to push out and. And, uh, Any little exclusive lyrics you can just spit to the camera? Exclusive lyrics? Oh. <laughs> Any tiny snippets of it's stuff? song, we have seen Boy, 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 boy. Oh, first one that comes to my head is called Bad Boy. So, me need a bad boy who gon' fight. Stand up for him right. A bad man that not afraid for using muscle. I used to man them trust and try. Be grinding him all out. Never know say in the breaking muscle. Me say him so, oh, oh, nice, yes, you do it right, make me go for sin. The mother not so hype, no, oh, 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 but me not let him go, I'll get them done, no. My man that so go, I need a, and it goes, I need a bad boy, yeah. <laughs> My name is Prisha Turner, big ups to Boom Shots. We just had a wicked interview, so let's keep it locked. So, can you see, can you see Spanish Town from here? Wait, listen, we can see Portmore all the way over to Hillshire. And then you can see Spanish Town is just up over there, but it's kind of behind the hill, so you can't see it completely. But yeah, man, Strawberry Hill, the view is always epic, day and night. So next time you come, you have to come in the night time so you see the city lights. I at know, night. right? So mm -hmm. what, the city lights up? So how does it feel for inspiration? You know, I always tell people this, but there's something about this island that I don't know what it does to me, but every time I just step foot, I, it, it, to me, it is, there's nothing like it. The music, the energy, the vibes, the people, the food. Jamaica always inspires me, every time. So and there's awesome. a lot of artists at the moment that just, they, are, they come to Jamaica. All for inspiration. All the time, but for you, it's different because you actually Oh, this yeah. is part of you. This is my, yeah. So you must feel you get emotional. Uh, I've had moments where I get emotional. You know, actually, it's funny. Every time, because my family used to come here every Christmas, I would always get like a, a mild panic attack, like anxiety attack, right before we landed. Oh, watch out for the arrow. Oh, gosh. Wait, wait. I wouldn't dare to kill you. No. It's not going to be very good. Dead on the job. I know. <laughs> but yeah, man, no, there's people who come here. But for me, yeah, I always used to have a slight anxiety attack every single time I landed. Because I always say I have a love hate relationship with Jamaica and Jamaicans. I don't know. Because, you know, when I lived here, like, you know, everybody deals with their, their drama Everything. and their issues. And I definitely had that when I used to live here, you know. So for me, that was always part of my. Why I can't deal with them, them too enough, them too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's a true story <laughs> yeah. because when you're trying hard and then you get caught up in this day to day thing, that's yeah. why people do have that love hate, but then you come back and you and realize. It, it, it's, it's exactly what I was going to say. As soon as I landed and I was here for like maybe like five minutes, 
and you start hearing the music and you just you see two Jamaicans that cross each other out on the street you're just like <laughs> I love this place like I'm it's home. there's just so many things about it that like just make me forget all of the the negatives that I might feel every once in a while so but I so I love it I love Jamaica well, you got the best of both worlds now because you can dip in and out of it. Exactly. Ele, Jimmy. Ele, Girls are ready with your hot dress to kill Drop it down low